Hi everyone, welcome back to my craft room. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you'll subscribe and join us each week uh, for new videos, uh, for crafting, and things that come up in my life, crafts that come up in my life as I just approach new things. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about the Cricut. I've had it now for, oh, oh, it's, it's not quite a year, but I've used it a lot and I love it. And so uh, what I was finding out is that all of a sudden, my Cricut was not cutting very well. And I love the Cricut and I use it for so many things. And so um, I was getting a little frustrated because I would go to cut and it wouldn't cut all the way through and I was uh, wasting vinyl and I went, oh, okay, what is going on? And so I started uh, researching and experimenting and learning what to do when your Cricut doesn't cut through your materials. And so that's what we're talking about today, how to solve that problem, because it's not hard to solve. There are several steps, several things to look at. And so let's just go through those. We're starting with the very easiest things and we'll work through each step of what to look at, what to do, uh, steps that are actually very easy, very inexpensive, and you can solve this problem. And we'll work all the way through the easiest things up until what to do if you actually discover that there actually is a problem with the machine. And so the first thing, very easiest thing, if you are cutting a variety of materials, which I kind of hope you are, because if you have a Cricut, experiment with it. And I love to try new materials. And so one of my favorite things to try on the Cricut and to use is faux leather. And uh, cutting faux leather has been kind of all over the place for me because there's such a wide variety in quality of faux leather. And so the quality, the thickness, the backing, all affects how your Cricut is going to cut it. I also actually enjoy cutting faux leather with scissors. So I kind of go back and forth between cutting faux leather on the Cricut and cutting it with scissors. But one of the things you do when you're cutting faux leather on the Cricut is the recommendation is to move your little white middle wheels to the sides. And so sometimes I move those to the side and then I forget to move them back. So number one, if your Cricut is not cutting your materials quite right, make sure that your white wheels are moved back into place along the middle of your uh, steel bar. Hmm, pretty easy. <laughs> okay, so that's number one. Make sure those wheels are in the correct place. So number two, uh, check your blade. So let's take a look at that. And so you're going to open that housing and take out that blade. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Uh, I actually have tape actually stuck to the bottom of that housing. Uh, wow, that was fortuitous that that happened right here on camera. So there's a good lesson. Number one, uh, once you're checking to the point of checking your blade, make sure that there is not stuff built up on that blade uh, that you don't have tape like that and also that there's not gunk built up on your blade because sometimes when you're cutting those adhesive vinyls or other things it can result in some buildup on the blade and so if you will push in on that the top of that blade you will see that it springs and you can push it down and you can check it to see if there is stuff built up on the blade. And you can even just carefully try not to cut yourself because those blades are very sharp. Just pull off any residue that has built up on the blade. So that is an important thing. Now, uh, then you can also, while that is out, go ahead and test to make sure the spring inside of that housing is working and that that blade is moving up and down freely, that when you push on it, that it springs back easily on its own 
and that there is a little bit of tightness as you push down that it it has some resistance that it's not just flopping down but that there's some resistance as you push down and that it springs back quickly and easily on its own as you're doing that once it springs back just check and make sure there's not goop <laughs> any stuff built up around the opening of that blade. Now, even when it has sprung back, that blade is still poking out of that hole a little bit. So don't run your fingers over the top of that hole because you'll cut yourself. So just check to make sure that that's tight and that that blade is, is working like it should. Now, if the blade is dull, you're going to need to change that blade. Now, let me tell you a little bit how you can test to see if your blade is dull. You can actually use that blade for many, many, many cuts before you have to change it. So um, the way I realized that I needed to, to change my blade, I actually had been using it for months and months. And we're talking about the uh, the fine point blade, which is what I use for 98% of all of my cutting. I was starting to see maybe some less precise cuts, maybe, uh, I guess I would say some cuts that were a little bit ragged. And so I was actually doing some mandalas and it, with paper. And so what I started noticing was some very intricate paper cutting that, um, it was actually starting to tear the paper a little bit and those cuts were much less precise. And so that was my first clue that maybe my blade was getting a little bit dull. And so I did some test cuts on different weights of paper and I started seeing that uh, on about 60 pound cardstock, which is not very heavy, uh, it was not precisely cutting. It was cutting, but it was not precise. And so I went ahead and I had been cutting for months and months and months and had never changed the blade. So that was my first indication that it was time to change the blade. And so I went ahead. Now, when it's time to change the blade, uh, Cricut does recommend that you buy the Cricut brand blade because that is what this machine is designed for. And so I got a Cricut brand blade. And so let's talk about how to change out that blade. You will open up your machine, open up port B, the white lever, open up the, the silver part, take out the entire housing. You will push down on the blade and you're going to carefully pull on the bottom part of that blade and just pull that whole blade out. Then you will throw that one away because it is so easy to mix up the new blade with the old blade. So go ahead and throw away the old blade. And then you will take out your new blade and it will be in a little plastic holder. The sharp point will be in the holder. So go ahead and take that uh, protective cover off. You can then throw the protective cover away. Then you're going to go ahead and carefully hold it and go ahead and just push it up into that housing and done. It's that easy. And then you'll you'll shake it down, push it down. Now, I like to check to make sure it's in there firmly, and it is. Push it in and out. Make sure there's that give. Make sure it's not just falling out. So the springs and things in there will just grab that blade and hold it in. Then you can go ahead and reinsert it back into the housing, into the into the machine. And then I usually give it a check right there to make sure it's working just like it should. Okay, so that's how you change your blade. After your blade is changed, then uh, make sure you uh, give it some test cuts. And I found after changing a blade that for my first several cuts, I had to actually adjust my uh, material settings a little bit on my materials to get it to cut correctly. And so you might have to do a few little adjustments once you've changed that blade. But once you've done that, uh, 
uh, you're back in business. So just plan on doing uh, some materials test cuts uh, for the first several times as you do new materials uh, after you've changed the blade. And I'm not sure why. It might be the way the housing is holding the new blade. Not sure. But just to be safe and not to waste uh, materials is probably a good idea to do that. So choosing the correct material setting is really important to make sure that it's uh, that your machine is cutting correctly because your machine will cut uh, using different pressures and different uh, numbers of repetitions through the material depending on what the material is. So it's really important that in Cricut Design Space you are selecting the correct materials. And Cricut Design Space is of course the software that you will be using uh, to create your projects, to import your projects, and to run your machine. So let's go into Cricut Design Space and let's just run through real quickly how you select your base material. Now we are going from the step in which you have already created a project, you've sent it to make it, and now we are in the cut screen. And so if you are if you don't know how we got to this part, look back in my other, in many other videos uh, into how I actually uh, created a project. And I have uh, several other videos um, that show actually how you go into Cricut Design Space and, and make a project. But here we've already done that. And so we are in the cut screen. All right, so in the cut screen, what we're going to do, we are in the first step where it is set base material. And I have here several materials that I use frequently. And I've already chosen them, starred them, so that they come up immediately in my uh, base material screen so that I don't have to go and choose them each time. And so let me show you how to do that. Let's say that I use felt a lot. I would go into browse all materials. I can look in the categories and I see felt here. So it will pull up felt and okay, let's say that I actually use uh, wool bonded felt. I can come over here and click on the star and then the next time when I go out and I come into browse all materials, you'll see that this felt has popped up here in my um, base material selection. So things that I use frequently, I can just choose and they will pop up here. But let's say today I am using smart vinyl, removable smart vinyl, and that it's not something I use frequently. So today I'm going to go into browse materials. I'm going to go into vinyl and I'm going to choose I'm going to go down in the list. There are a lot of vinyls. I'm going to use removable smart vinyl, and then I'll come to the vine, the bottom and select done. Okay. And it will immediately up here in base material, it sets it to smart vinyl removable. Okay. So that is how I set my base material. Now it's really important that I set that correct base material because every base material cuts at that different pressure. Now, um, when it comes to smart vinyl, uh, smart vinyls have a much heavier backing. So the smart vinyls have to cut at a, at a little bit of a heavier pressure. And so um, let's say I do a test cut on that smart vinyl. And here is uh, and a really important step in making sure that your Cricut is cutting through your base materials. You may have to actually go in and increase the pressure settings in your machine. And there are two ways to go about doing that. So let's go back into Cricut Design Space and let me show you a couple of different ways to do that. Okay, so I have my smart vinyl removable set up here. I can come to this pressure setting and I can increase pressure here as a one-time thing. So I could do it that way and just increase that pressure setting for that one cut. Or I can go into Cricut Design Space 
and permanently increase the pressure setting for any one material. So let's say I uh, use heavy card stock frequently, say if I'm doing mandalas or cards, and I frequently find that uh, it's just not quite, quite cutting through the way I like. I can increase the pressure setting for that material every time. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say I'm going to increase the pressure setting for this heavy cardstock. I can come into Browse Materials, and then I scroll down to the very bottom to Material Settings, and I click on that, and then I can find that heavy cardstock in my list, and I'm going to use my scroll button clear over here, and I am going to look for card stock in the list. And here it is, uh, card stock for intricate cuts. And that's typically what I'm using that for. So I come to this edit and then I can slide this uh, little button over to the right. And that is how I adjust that. I would generally adjust 15 points up or down. So I would go up to 215. Then I can go out of that, do a practice cut, and see how it's doing. If it's still not deep enough, I go up another 15, another 15, until it's cutting exactly like I want it to. And I can adjust that specifically for every material that I'm using. When you leave Cricut Design Space, it will hold that new setting. And so, um, you can actually go in and adjust each material that you use. Now, you won't have to do that with every material because you don't use all the materials, but the materials that you use and you use frequently, if it's not cutting just right, then you will go ahead and do that. You can do this with different types of fabric and all of those things. And so this is just a way for you to get that machine cutting just like you want it to. Now, uh, if you are having further problems and, and you are just not getting it to cut like you would like it to, don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Your best next, next step would be to call member care and you can get a hold of Cricut member care. There's information online, uh, to get a hold of Cricut member care, but call them. All kinds of wacky things can happen. So try different materials. Don't give up. Experiment with your Cricut, but know it is like other machines that sometimes it just needs some experimentation and a little bit of work, a little bit of, of love. And uh, just keep keep working with it. Uh, try the little things, the little tweaks and hacks. And use creativity to bless your life and to, and to bring joy to others. We'll see you next time. Music